In this episode, I'm going to teach you why you can back squat more weight than you can front squat. I want you to have the capability to fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Jump of a hand, I'll take you back to where my problems lie. And trouble younger daughter done some shit that made my mama cry. Out to the heavens like I bless him for I know he's lost. Caught in the trance and this manic depression settled in. Living in the fantasy. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dr. Anna Horchik and this is episode 15 of the Ask Squat You Show. I got a lot of great feedback from our last classroom edition, so we're back at it again. Welcome back to Squat University Classroom Edition Biomechanics 101. Let's get today's question. Smiley Wu writes, as you explained in the end of the film while referencing to science, there's the same activation in the glutes and quads except for a one rep max. How can we then lift more weight in the back squat than a front squat? All right, so this is another huge question I get. Why can you back squat more than you can front squat? The simple answer is leverage. Now, if you remember back to the last video we did in the classroom edition, we debunked the myth that your quads and your glutes are basically working more so on one technique than the other. Basically, a front squat is not quad dominant. A back squat isn't hip dominant. Your body basically transfers energy from one joint to another based on the type of technique you're using. So how, if your quads and your glutes aren't really working much different depending on the type of lift you're doing, how do you lift more weight in a back squat compared to a front squat? Well, let me explain. The simple answer is leverage. Now, if we wanna analyze a squat, we always look at it from a side view and we're gonna pause it at that parallel position. That gives us the best chance to scientifically analyze what's going on and what type of forces are being placed on either joint, the hip or the knee in this case. Now, when we pause it in that position, you're going to be able to discover the moment arm length. If you look at it from the side, you'll see that gravity pulls straight down on the bar with a dotted line we can draw vertically because gravity always pulls up and down, never pulls side to side. So if we draw that dotted line straight down, it'll eventually cut the thigh in two. Now, the distance between that vertical dotted line and the joint that we're talking about, so the distance from the hip joint all the way to that dotted vertical line, is your hip joint moment arm. And the longer that is, the more torque that is produced at that joint. Think about it like this. If I have a really long wrench, I'm able to easily turn a bolt compared to a really short wrench. The reason is because I increased the lever of the wrench. I didn't change how hard I'm pulling, I just increased the lever arm length. The same goes for our squat. So the longer the moment arm is from the hip to that point of vertical gravity pull increases how much torque or turn can be placed on that joint. Now, how does this relate to how much we can squat versus a certain lift? Well, it all comes down to how long that moment arm is. Like I said, the amount of force that your quads and your glutes are producing doesn't really change that much between the certain lift techniques. It all comes down then to leverage. So when you look at a back squat versus a front squat, the back squat, because it has a more inclined chest position in order to stay balanced, will have therefore a longer moment arm for the hip. Basically, as the chest comes forward, in order to stay balanced and keep the bar over the midfoot, the hip has to go backwards. When the hips move back farther, there's more distance, therefore, between the hip joint and the vertical line of gravity that cuts the thigh in two. All of this means is that your wrench or your hip joint is longer. So that means that because you have a longer wrench from the hip joint to the vertical line of gravity, you have more leverage at that joint. And the way our bodies are designed as humans is we are allowing ourselves to lift more weight. We're the most mechanically efficient when the torque is highest at the hip joint compared to the knee joint. Now, a lot of people will take this and say, well, why don't people always lift with a low bar position versus a high bar position? Really, it comes down to being comfortable. Even though on paper, you can lift more weight in the back squat with a low bar position, doesn't always mean that that's what's going to feel the most comfortable on your back. I know plenty of power lifters who still use a high bar back squat position. So my question of the day then is, what squat for the back squat do you use? Do you use a low bar squat? Do you use a high bar squat? Or 
Do you jump between the two based on your training program? I hope you guys are enjoying these Ask Squat You Shouts. Today I was a little bit shorter on one, but I hope it was still informative and in allowing you to understand a little bit more about the biomechanics of the body. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. I hope you guys are having a great day and your training's going well. Happy squatting, everyone. Hometown hero on the road doing shows and sold out arenas. You can call me what you want, but you won't ever slow my dreams up. This is the vision of a dreamer. I seem to.